Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, Disney in trouble with the FCC? There's a growing number of companies, including a new one now, pushing the FCC to investigate Disney and their behavior. YouTube TV, uh, Sling, Fubo, Hulu, and more saw a very disappointing second quarter. We'll break down those numbers. And if you're a WWE fan, some big changes coming to how you watch those content. These stories and a whole lot more coming up in a quick second. First though, if you um, want to learn more about any of these stories I'm about to talk about, I'll put a link to each one in the show notes and in the first pinned comment so you can read them for yourself there. If you're new here and you like what we do, please consider hitting that subscribe button or hitting that thumbs up, doing one or both lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow and hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of television. All right, let's dive into it. Apologize to my voice. Uh, recovering from the weekend. I guess I'm in my 40s now and my voice doesn't do so well after a football game like it used to. But DirecTV, jumping into the news, DirecTV has accused Disney of negotiating in bad faith and filed an FCC complaint against Disney. This joins other pushes, primarily by Fubo, to get um, federal government in some format to investigate Disney. Of course, uh, there's also been senators asking the Department of Justice to look into their new venue um, sports joint venture with Fox and Warner Bros. Discovery and others. It'll be very interesting to see how this plays out, if the FCC will take it up. So far, no signs of that happening, but that doesn't mean anything at this moment. DirecTV is arguing that Disney is doing a bunch of things. First of all, not negotiating in good faith. Second, demanding that in order for them to reach a deal with Disney to restore Disney-owned channels like ESPN to DirecTV, they have to agree not to sue um, Disney for anti-competitive behaviors, basically saying they won't join the lawsuit by Fubo and they won't launch their own. It's been reported that many large TV providers, including some large cable companies, are very closely watching how everything is going with Fubo. And if it goes well, they may join in similar pushes in the future here and throw their support in. For now, they're just closely monitoring it. And it seems like Disney's trying to get ahead of that by requiring any new contracts to indemnify them against potential uh, you know, lawsuits for this. Now, it's not unusual for identification to be part of contracts, though I've been told that this specific clause that specifically targets anti-competitive behavior and basically trying to block future lawsuits like Fubo is new and different. Other people say, well, this is kind of general and this is normal. Well, if this is normal, how is Fubo able to sue Disney then? Uh, that's been my question. We'll have to see how this plays out, but Disney's behavior for how they run their TV channels is increasingly coming in the crosshairs of companies who are not so happy with it. And let's be honest, uh, DirecTV's in the middle of a contract fight, so they're obviously not very happy with Disney. Fubo's unhappy because they feel like this new venue sports service directly um, goes against them and puts them at a disadvantage from something they wanted to do, but Disney's contracts and more have prevented. DirecTV has also said Disney wants them to only offer their channels in bundles in a way that they don't want to. They want to do smaller, more flexible um, channel options, but for now that's not there. We'll have to keep a close eye on this, but if your prediction in now, will the FCC get involved in this or will the FCC pass again? Do you think that there's a serious enough complaint here for the FCC to take it seriously and try to do something? Leave me a comment, let me know, I'll love to hear from you. All right, next story up. We talked a little bit about this um, earlier this week and last week about how surprisingly small number of people who are canceling cable TV are switching to live TV services like YouTube TV, Fubo, Sling, Hulu Plus Live TV, etc. Well, now a new report from Muffin Nathanson says in the second quarter, these services all combined added just 49,000 subscribers. Uh, far cry from the several million that canceled, um, or several million, whatever, millions who have canceled their cable and satellite subscriptions so far in that quarter. Doesn't surprise me. For one, it was the time of year a little bit. In the first quarter, YouTube TV actually lost subscribers after adding a million in the third quarter of 2024. I, or 2023, I should say. In the third quarter of 2024, I suspect we'll see much stronger numbers because NFL football, college football, all that stuff kicking off. And then the fourth quarter, it'll probably remain strong for a while. 
These things are slightly circular um, with the fact that there's no long-term contracts. Increasingly, people are subscribing to services when they want it and canceling when they don't. And when, if you're a college or pro football fan, for example, why would you be paying for YouTube TV in the second quarter when you can put it on hold, cancel it, whatever, and pick it back up in the third quarter? And I think we're going to see this become a bigger and bigger thing going forward. I do that. I rotate my streaming services all the time and very happy with it. We'll see how that plays out. But for now, this is troubling for cable executives who hoped, I've talked about this many times, they really thought a majority of cable TV subscribers would just switch to a streaming service that offered their cable networks. Well, that's not happening with a less than um, 30% of new core coders getting a live TV service. You can see why that's a big problem. All right, if you're a WWE SmackDown fan, you may have noticed that it is changing. It's going to be leaving Hulu because it's leaving Fox. Fox is going to be losing uh, WWE SmackDown here soon. As its contract expires, it seems that Fox has decided not to renew it at this time. This means the WWE SmackDown content on Hulu will also be leaving. You'll need to find a new home for that once it's announced in the future. But Hulu losing a little bit of content there. If you're a... Um, fan of WWE, hopefully it moves to a service that already offers wrestling content so you don't have to subscribe to as many services. All right, have you ever wondered what it takes to make YouTube TV's um, multi-view work, especially for an NFL Sunday ticket? Well, they gave us kind of a look behind. YouTube has a command center for YouTube TV where they run the multi-view. And according to the picture, over 50 staff members sit in a command center with over 13 TVs that they use to be able to um, create the multi-view. Now with the YouTube TV's multi-view, they do offer pretty much every combination of locally aired games and NFL Sunday ticket games you could possibly want. And it's like build your own stream within the football world, for example. Well, to make that all possible, every weekend, a command center of about 50 people sit watching these TVs, make sure A, everything runs smoothly, all the correct options are out there and more. Pretty cool. I've been in a. I've not been in the YouTube TV, but I've actually been in the Sling TV command center. I once got a chance when I was at a conference in um, Denver to tour the Sling TV offices quite a few years ago. It was really cool. They had a similar command center, maybe not quite this big, where they had TVs with pretty much every channel running on it, and where if an issue was reported through the system from a variety of different ways, it was forwarded to this command center. And then we tested it while I was there. It was kind of cool. There was an issue with a particular DVR, um, not DVR, a on-demand movie. People were complaining that you would try to watch an on-demand movie and the wrong movie was playing. I was there, I saw, yeah, they started doing it. It showed the wrong movie and it was real quick. Within a few minutes, they fixed it. They figured out it was redirecting to the wrong file, basically. They fixed that and did it. It was pretty cool. The thing was a separate one. Honestly, I wouldn't mind watching college football in there because there were big TVs ever. There were more TVs in that command center than in this YouTube one. Uh, so it's kind of cool to see that. Um, and there are real humans doing this. Over 50 during Sunday NFL football with that. It'll be interesting to see what the average staffing in this command center is. I'm assuming with NFL Sunday ticket, this was higher than normal. Check out the story in the show notes for a photo of that command center. All right, if you're looking for what's new on uh, YouTube TV and others, or uh, Netflix, Max, and others, I apologize, check out corecarzoos.com, link in the show notes. I have a post with a bunch of new content out there. Check it out. Um, there, everything coming out this week on these services. All right, question of the day. If you have a question for me, leave me a comment. Um, start off with something like a question for Luke, so I know it's something for you want me to answer. One of the questions I got is, hey, how come we're not talking more about UVerse TV and why and its blackout with Disney? Now, UVerse is Disney or uh, is AT&T's old TV service, no longer sold, has not been sold in a long time. Current customers have been able to keep it. This comes as they're pushing people to DirecTV, DirecTV Stream, and the like. Well, DirecTV actually owns UVerse now. So when we talk about DirecTV not offering it, that also includes UVerse. When AT&T spun off their TV division, they bundled UVerse, AT&T's UVerse TV, which I think they just call UVerse TV now. They dropped the AT&T off of it. Uh, I believe in most markets they've done that. Uh, they just bundled that into the DirecTV division that they own a majority of, but operates as an independent separate company. Now with that though, 
you can't sign up for it. Only existing customers, and they're trying really hard to get those existing customers to switch to DirecTV or DirecTV via internet or DirecTV stream. It's just kind of one of those legacy things out there that I apologize, I, I should have included that in the DirecTV post. The good news here is you are also eligible if you are an AT&T U-verse TV customer to take advantage of the discounts on like Sling TV, Fubo, and Hulu Plus Live TV. If you are, you're also a credit or available for a billing credit one time for this, but I'll be honest, you've probably been seeing this, they've been pushing those customers really hard to switch to direct TV and so they can stop supporting these legacy systems. I suspect in the next few years, Uverse TV will go away and they'll, they'll force you to migrate to direct TV or direct TV stream or direct TV by internet or some type of version of direct TV so they can shut down these legacy systems. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm going to go rest my voice. Take care. Be safe. I'll talk to you all again real soon.